a low swear back in this time. We have a nice laptop to repair. I mean, you can figure it out by the box. It's a nice laptop inside, yeah? Let's see. Huh? i7 9 gen you can see 9 gen there yeah so this is this is a proper nice laptop what this laptop is doing let's check the customer email so the customer is saying has stopped uh, charging and does not switch on when connected to the power adapter there was a previous investigation where a mosfet failure was suspected However, the repair wasn't completed, and the laptop has been returned to me. I mean, this is weird. I mean, any computer shop, if they will find a shorted MOSFET, probably they will replace it, right? There was a reminder of a fuse capacitor on the board, which was sent. But this also removed. On the return of the laptop from the repair attempt, I try laptop with identical battery, we charge, and laptop switch on. So there is obviously an issue with the charging circuit. However, that's the limit of the knowledge. If something to, yeah, we can have a look and try to help this customer, but the description is pretty weird. Let's try and open the laptop and see uh, what's the story inside. For me, it's hard to digest. Actually, the customer plugged up charge battery and figure it out it's a charging issue and not the computer shop because any computer shop they have a lot of power supply they can charge the battery and they can you know make a difference okay what is the problem the charging circuit or the rest of the motherboard so uh yeah the story is strange wow that's a proper nice laptop check here ah uh, so we have like two m2 drives we have the chipset here, GPU, CPU, so this has a dedicated GPU chip. This is a proper nice laptop, you know what I mean? This connector is, yeah, so someone took out the cable and uh, forgot to plug the connector. Okay, the charging port, the charge, wait, wait, a screw just fell off from the, from the laptop. The charging port is a normal charging port, Lenovo, yeah? But also we have USB-C. Good, let's unplug the battery. And uh, let's check the main power rail. Just to be sure, the main power rail is not shorted. So the main power rail is not shorted. So it is possible the customer to be right. Like, he plugged the charge, wait one second. Original damage, previous work. Uh, not sure what the customer want to. Wait, here is something on the board. Okay, let's check there. Let's have a look. What happened there? What happened there? Wait, I try to understand what happened there. So this is the charging circuit, right? So not sure what happened here. Do you think actually the original fault was a blow up capacitor here? Or what happened here? So here it is a fuse and the fuse is good. Now let's see, let's see about this charging connector. Here is ground, here is plus, so plus, is coming to the fuse, from the fuse, from the fuse, to the MOSFET, from the MOSFET, to the current sensor, then it's another MOSFET here, and this MOSFET, okay, it is a capacitor on the output of this coil, this capacitor, this one. This MOSFET has been removed. This MOSFET has been removed. We have few diodes here, which someone work here. We have a solder ball here. Okay, let's plug a charger. Let me plug my charger, yeah? Let me plug my one. 
So let's switch to 19. And we plugged the charger and nothing happened. I mean, the customer said, you know, was no repair was made on the laptop. But actually, this board is very worked. So someone did try to repair the laptop. Here we have a current sensor. We have 18.8. Why? Huh? Why 18.8? I mean, we are coming with 19.4. Why we have 18.8? Mm -hmm. This is weird. So this indeed is uh, a big question mark. Eighteen point nine. This is the battery on the battery. Have like eighteen volts. So plug in the battery, and nothing happened. Obviously, I'm plugging the charger. I'm plugging the charger, and we have zero volts. Plug in the charger, and we have 18. So, this battery is not charging. Yeah, the battery is not charging. Either the battery is faulty or something else. And I'm not sure what is here. I'm not sure if uh, this laptop can work without battery. But there is a solder ball. Good. What's the story with this MOSFET? Here we have 18.9. 18.9. So you understand, our issue is not e even here. I mean, you can't start repairing something like that when your problem is your voltage. Your voltage is not right. You are losing somewhere like 0 0.6 volts. And most likely on the input circuit. So we cannot start digging here. We should start from the battery connector. But the problem is, I believe, the first and the second MOSFET is on the other side of the board, because I can't see anything here. So we have to take the motherboard out. And you know what? This one was one of the reasons why I took this job, because the customer said, you know, no one tried to repair it. Feels bad, man. I mean, I can fix the input circuit, but then we have another fault. Then we have a dead battery. Okay, so the motherboard, it's out. Good. Let's plug the charger. And I'm assuming the input circuit is here, right? Here. Yeah, it is here. Good. Let's have a look together. Yeah, so we do have the first MOSFET, second MOSFET, and we have a fuse also. This is the input. Then we have first MOSFET, second MOSFET, and this is the output. Let's see where we are losing the voltage. So on the input we have 19.5, on the output we have 19.5, on the output of this one we have 18.9, you see? So here it's an issue. The first MOSFET is doing the job, but not the second. Let's check the first MOSFET to be sure it's not shorted. It can be shorted. Let's see. So first MOSFET is not shorted. Second MOSFET is not shorted. Gate with source, good. Gate with source, good. Fantastic. Good. Now let's check the voltages. So, on the first, on the gate, first MOSFET gate, we have 6 volts, lol. 
Oh yeah, because it's a channel. Uh, uh, it's a channel P MOSFET. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And then we have a channel N MOSFET. Yeah, this is a channel N MOSFET. And here you should have like a high voltage here, and you have like four volts, and that's not normal. 19.5, and here we have 18.9. We have 3.9 volts. Why is that? 3.9. You have a MOSFET. You know what? Let me plug the original uh, customer charger. Let me see. Let's be sure we are doing the right thing. So plug in the customer charger. Good. So we have... On the output we have 19.8 and here we have over 20 yeah so it's wrong however you are looking 4.8 good okay so the customer charger is not helpful in this case because so i plug back my charger let me be sure i'm using low current because i'm gonna do some dodgy things we have like 400 milliamps. Okay, that's fine. We are safe. So here we have 3.962 and here we have 3.964. 63. Hmm. Not sure if we are losing uh, the voltage on this MOSFET. But it's looking weird anyway. Or do you think the MOSFET has been replaced? Can be a channel P. But no, with the output here should be a channel N. Yeah. Here we have like zero volts. Okay, power management chip, where is it? What is this? We don't know. We have a TPS here. We should plug the USB-C charger. Okay. 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 Good. BQ. Oh, this is a classic BQ chip. Hmm? You know what? This can be a channel and MOSFET, but we can find out soon. Uh, so what I'm going to do? Let's see if it's a channel pure and... So we have nothing. We have four volts, right? Okay, that's fine. Come on. We have six volts. But when I'm touching here, I lose the voltage to four. You can see? Why, why I'm losing voltage here? That's my question. And you know what? Someone were here. You know what? I can see someone were here. That resistor has been desoldered. I think. Anyway, I'm not happy I'm losing voltage. So if I come with 6 volts there, uh, the voltage gets dropped to 4 volts. And I'm not happy with that. Let's remove that MOSFET quickly. Yeah, you know what I think? I think someone made that confusion. So here was a channel P MOSFETs and they switched it with a channel M. Because otherwise I cannot explain. That's what I think happened here. Okay, so plug in the charger. And here we have 3.8. LOL. 
0.9, we still have 3.9 volts here. We have one resistor, this resistor is connected to plus, you can see, it's connected here, yeah, good. So who is dropping my voltage, this resistor? So this is a divider, we have one resistor from the divider, this is the second resistor from the divider. Then we have a diode, then we have a MOSFET, then we have another resistor, and we have a MOSFET here. So what is supposed to happen here? Actually the gate 4.1, short is this thing is, and 3.8. The power supply is clicking. I'm not happy with that. Let me low, higher the current. Check there, 80 milliamps. You seen that? Now it's taking like 60 milliamps. So one more time. 1.7 amps. Ah, 400 milliamps. The fans are spinning. 2 amps. Yeah, check there. Check the current. Check the current. The fans are spinning. Check here. Huh? You see? And now obviously the current goes to zero. So you see, it's not like I'm dodgy, but this board, it's asking. It's, it's sorry, please. Use a proper calibrated wire instead of the MOSFET. You see exactly what I told you. The board is begging me to use a wire. You see, the board is working. If I short, uh, you know, the MOSFET place with the tweezer, it's working. Wow, what a job. No, I can't put wire there because I'm recording and the people, it will say I'm dodgy. <laughs> Uh, so what's the problem? Actually, we don't know what is the problem. If that MOSFET is a channel P and someone replaces the channel N, that can explain why it's not working. Let me see what MOSFET is this one. I don't believe this MOSFET is original, it's genuine. My microscope died. What? Why? How a microscope can die? Yeah, let's see now. It's fixed, yeah. Yeah, that's the tool. That's how you fix a microscope camera. Okay. S402. Let me check. Yeah. It's a channel and exactly what I told you. Ha ha. Ah, uh, it's so good to be right. Yeah, so the story is like that, yeah? This is a channel and MOSFET. So either the MOSFET was replaced wrongly with a channel and MOSFET, or we have a fault on the motherboard, and that's the reason why we don't have uh, 25 volts on the gate. We, we must have 25 on the gate. But I don't believe... The board is faulty. I believe the MOSFET was wrongly replaced. I believe here has to be like a channel uh, P MOSFET. That's what I believe. So I'm going to have a look for a channel P MOSFET and replace it. Okay, found one. I found one here. Yeah, that one. That one is a channel P MOSFET. How do I know? I checked on Google. I checked on Google.
21357 it's a channel p mosfet perfect so the mosfet is soldered let's take this mosfet out let me cool down the board let's see so plug in the charger okay nothing happened let's check so here we have 19.5 and here we have 19.5 so you understand this is a channel P MOSFET, so now everything is fine. And on the gate we have 3.8, which can be fine. Now a question is why the motherboard didn't start? You see, this is a good question. So you have 19.5 here, and you have 19.5 here. So why the motherboard didn't start? Okay, so we solved the problem with the MOSFET. But still, we have a second issue. With the wire, with the short, the motherboard is starting. With the MOSFET, actually, the motherboard is not starting. So, what we are doing wrong? I mean, with the tweezer, is starting, but with actually a good MOSFET, is not starting. Let's check the main power rail. So, the main power rail is 14.4. Fourteen point four is because we have a power supply which is creating the main power rail. Yeah, most likely this one, right? Yeah, must be. Okay, let's see what is the power button. Yeah, let me check. So the power button is on the motherboard. So we have two point nine. Pressing the power button is going to zero, and the motherboard is starting. Check there. The motherboard is on. So actually, it is working. LOL, so we fix it? That was the issue? I mean, we have the light there, you can see, it's taking like 2.4 amps. Cool, cool. What about the battery? The battery is charging? I mean, we fix it if it's coming on. That's all what we want to know. So the battery... Plug in the battery, good. Plug in the charger. We plug the charger, nothing happened. Cool, let's press the power button. It's coming on. So it is coming on. Wait, I pressed twice on the power button. You're pressing the power button, it is coming on. But it's not sure. Wait, the battery is not plugged in. Now it's plugged in. And it's not charging. The board is on, but it's not charging. Yeah, it's working. It, it's warm and it's taking 2.5 amps. Everything is fine. Let me shut down the board. Yeah, the board is off and is not charging. Why is not charging? You say, sorry, the charging circuit is faulty. I mean, can be, can be faulty. But on the battery, we have 19.8. Huh? Why is not charging? You say, sorry, yes, sorry, but we have 19.8 because probably the high side MOSFET is shorted. Yeah, but I don't care about that. That means the battery should take full current. I should have, like, the power supply on the limit, but I don't. And this, my friend, it's a faulty battery. Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> ah, that sucks. If the main power is 14 volts, how do I have 19 on the battery? It doesn't make sense. I mean, the battery is 15.3. Okay, it is making sense. 
So basically, we have uh, 4.2 times 4. No, times 3. No, times 4. So this battery fully charged has 16.8 volts. So if the battery full charge has 16.8, clearly cannot get charged from the main power rail. Okay, let's pay attention on the configuration of this charging circuit. Well, the battery is still there, don't, don't get me wrong, but I just want to understand what's going on here. Because we have that uh, blow up truck there, and we don't know what it's doing. So basically here we have the current sensor, 19.8, and before the current sensor, we have 1.8 volts. Okay, what is here? 1.8. No, one second. Here we have 19.8, and here we have 19.8. Okay. Then we have this MOSFET. Here it has 19.8, and here we have... 19.8. So this is a channel and MOSFET, and on the gate we have 19.8. Now this is a weird design. Here you have nothing. Here you have 19.8. But the main power rail, one second. The main power rail is 19.8, but we checked together it was like 14 volts, you remember? Okay. Okay. Okay, I understand now. Yeah. Everything is start making sense. So what do we have now? Now we have a working board pressing the power button and the board it is coming on. Yeah, it is coming on, you can see. On the screen, staying current, the fans are spinning, everything is fine. All what we have left, it's a faulty battery. What we are doing with the faulty batteries? Recycle and buy a new one. Mm -hmm. No, we are not doing something like that on this channel. No, 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 no. Let me grab the NLB analyzer. So we have plus, we have minus. Okay, so let's check. So the battery is connected to the NLB uh, analyzer. Let's bring the software on the screen. And the battery is locked, you can see it? Yeah, the cells are fully charged, 4.2 volts, but the battery is locked. Yeah. The health of the battery is brand new. This is a brand new battery, you can see? The capacity is empty. So how the capacity of the battery can be empty if the cells, they have 4.2 volts? So I believe this is a firmware error into the battery. The cycle count of the battery is 10 cycles. Yes, yeah, so this is a brand new battery. Good. Let's go to reset. New reset. Read. Next. Next. Charger di charging disable, discharging disable, PF status, we have a zero two at the end, yeah? So this battery has errors. Now let's unseal. All done, so we clear all errors here. Yeah? We have no errors. We have the charge fed active, charge discharge fed active. Good. Now let's see exit book. Read cheap info. Good. And reading goal. And the battery is unlocked. Check here the capacity. Yeah, you seen the capacity, how it jumped from empty to nearly full. So actually the voltage on the cells was right, but the charge state was wrong. So all good. If I go now, discharge, start discharging. So 
start charging and it's not charging you can see on the current saying zero nothing I think we have a second problem here. I mean, I'm trying to discharge the battery and I can't do it. Okay, this battery is strange. I mean, we uh, clearly it was a firmware error. Uh, the battery is unlocked. Now we have the charge state, okay. But I cannot charge it, I cannot discharge it. So I believe either the battery is working or the fuse, uh, the internal fuse is blow up. So what I'm gonna do is let's try the battery first let's see if it's out it's, if it, the battery is outputting any voltage so the battery voltage is six volts seven volts what's that you can see so i believe this battery fuse is blow up that's what i believe okay that's fine Let's do a small incision here, surgical. Yeah, it's here. Ha ha, check here. But where is the fuse? Huh? Let's go and check. So we have the BQ chip, but where is the fuse? On the other side, we need access on the other side. And we have access. Check there. Ah, huh? the fuse is there. Let's see. So that's a heated fuse. Let's see what do we have inside. Lol, check there, check there. The fuse is blow up. You can see it? Yeah. We need a little bit of flux here. Let's clean it. Perfect. That's a perfect calibrated fuse. Exactly. So what about now? Sorry, now what voltage is on the output? Let's check together. So the output voltage is 16.6. .6. Check on the screen. Huh? The battery is unlocked. The battery is good. Let's see if it's charging. And if it's charging, with what current is charging? Because, you know, I mean... I have no idea what that fuse blow up, probably because of the firmware error. Yeah, the battery had a firmware error, you remember? Yeah, that's the reason why. Lol, the fans are spinning straight away, you can see. Wow. You can see the board is on. Let me plug the charger. No, check that. You seen that? Yeah, that's the reason why the fuse blow up. So basically, yeah, the board is on. Sorry, the board is on. Let me switch it off. Yeah, now the board is off. It should be off. No, it's not off. Okay, now the board is off. Plug in the charger. Check there. Now it's taking way too much current. 3.3 amps and it's going to zero because it has an over current protection. You can see? Way too much current. That's the reason why that fuse blow up. Because the board push too much current into the battery. Hmm. 
So why is that? And if I'm trying to push current, uh, the, fuse, the fuse will blow up again, the battery fuse, and very possible it will get locked again. Okay, let's see who is pushing so much current into the battery, because we have a MOSFET which is pushing mad current into the battery. Let's see. Hopefully the board is not coming on, and it's not coming on. Let me lower the current. Yeah. Check, check the battery wire, you can see it, just to understand how much current is pushed uh, into the battery. And the MOSFET which is getting hot is this one which was replaced before. This one was replaced. So this MOSFET, which we didn't touch it, yeah? This one, it was replaced. So what MOSFET was supposed to be here? Hmm? That's my question. A channel N, a channel P, yeah, you see, we don't know, we have no idea. We have few dyes which has been replaced here. The MOSFET is shorted? No, the MOSFET is not shorted. So checking the MOSFET. Oh, lol, it's zero ohms. Lol, the MOSFET it is shorted. Okay, let's uh, remove the MOSFET. So we remove the MOSFET and I will solder back the MOSFET from the input. You remember this one? This one, it was good, right? So what about now? Let me cool down. Now this MOSFET is shorted. It's not. Okay, let's check. So plug, plug in the battery again. Good, so the motherboard is not coming on. Battery is plugged, charging port is plugged. Plug in the power supply. Check there, 20 milliamps. Check there, 20 milliamps. So this is the pre-charge current, just wait. To see if the current is going up. No, it's not going up. So the main power rail. Why the current is not going up? Anyone knows? The main power rail 19.9. The voltage battery, the battery voltage 16.5. So no one is pushing current into the battery. So this MOSFET on one side I have 19.9 and on the other side I have 16.5, which is fine. So the MOSFET is not pushing current. But why is not charging? Huh? Battery is good, right? Why is not charging? Because the AC chip doesn't know the charging current? Because the battery connector is dodgy? Huh? Let's see. Oh, yeah, it is dodgy. It's not even plugged in. It is plugged in. But still, I don't trust this battery connector. Uh, because we use the battery connector with uh, NLBA and it is possible huh? it is possible like the pins are not touching the pins from the board those pins are fine but I don't know about the others okay so it's not charging but what is taking 20 milliamps yeah 20 milliamps. 
What is taking that current? Here, something on the other side of the board. Wait, let me unplug the battery. Okay, so now it's tracking 20 milliamps, no matter what. Pressing the power button. The board it is coming on. Yeah, I have a current limit. Yeah, pressing the power button, the board is coming on. Let me switch off. What is taking 20 milliamps? That's my question. 20 milliamps. Uh, let's check here because here I seen some heat. What is that? This is the BQ chip actually. Oh, huh? check that. Yeah, it must be the BQ chip. I can't believe so. Our BQ chip has a hole on it and we, we didn't see it. Check that. Why the BQ chip has a hole? We didn't see that hole before, right? It was not there. Lol. Okay. So the laptop is working, but with the Biki chip having a hole on it. That's cool. That's a cool motherboard. Let's replace the Biki chip. And you know what? I heard like a pop when I plugged in the battery first time. But now it's making sense. Basically the Biki chip just blow up. But it's pretty cool. I mean, even with a blow up BQ chip, we still have the, the input circuit is still working fine. Okay, so it looks like I have no BQ chip around me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna order and uh, probably see you again like in two days, yeah? Bye. So we are uh, two days later. I ordered the, the BQ chips from uh, Mauser. I bought more because uh, I have none. So let's solder the BQ chip and let's see what this board is doing. If I remember, the issue was uh, very high charge current. No, one second, the BQ chip was exploded. No, the BQ chip exploded when I plug uh, the battery after I repaired the battery, yes. Now I remember. I believe the BQ chip was that uh, from before, but he exploded only on the moment I plugged the battery repaired. Okay, let's uh, apply some flux. Yeah, the, everything is fine here. I see the pins. Perfect. Good. All good. Now let's solder the BK chip. P number one, yeah, Perfect. Now let's get the extra solder out. Yeah. All good. So the BK chip is soldered uh, properly on place. Let's uh, cool down the board. Now let's plug the battery and the charger. Okay, nothing exploded. So plug in the charger, 19 volts. And...
And this taking no current. The fans are spinning, so I'm uh, assuming it's running on the battery. But nothing. Hey, why is taking no current? Lol, 4.7 amps. 4.7 because the board was working? One second. Okay, the board is off. Let's plug the battery. The battery is plugged and nothing happened. It's taking no current. Hmm. Why? Why is taking no current? Unplug the charger. Taking 400 milliamps. Let's check the battery voltage. 16.3. You know what? I believe this uh, battery probably is for 3.5 and it's going. Yeah, it's not charging. No, no, it's not charging. It's pushing full current into the battery. <sighs> okay, that's bad. Okay, let's try to focus on the charging circuit. Uh, you know what, I will say, but that's my, my thing, yeah, I will say, let's solder this MOSFET back, yeah, and let's go back to the input circuit. You know why? Because we remove a channel, a channel and MOSFET and we, we solder a channel P. Because on that point, based on the vo on the gate voltage, we thought it's a channel P. But now, because I seen this high charging current, I'm not sure about that. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna remove the second MOSFET, and uh, we're gonna check the gate voltage. Because we replaced the BK chip. The gate is coming straight from the BK chip. Okay. Let's plug the charger. So plug in the charger. It's taking nothing. That's fine. Let's check the voltage there. We have 4.5 volts on the gate. Uh, it is a channel P MOSFET. On this gate, we have 6.8. I'm still confused. Why do I have different voltage on the gate? 4.5. Okay, let me try and get a schematic. Yeah, we really need a schematic on this one. I found the schematic. I can't believe it was so easy. I mean, the schematics was on the, on the bad caps uh, forum. Okay, let's see uh, what we got right and uh, what we got wrong. This is the battery input and the coil is on the middle. So we have plus, okay, I got that, yeah. Yeah, it's making sense. 
No, it's not making sense. We have one MOSFET connected to ground, connected to plus and connected to ground. But this MOSFET, it's one I found that shorted from the plus, right? Yeah. And that one is a channel. Can see what MOSFET is that one? It's a channel N. That's good. Yeah, we found. Oh, we found this MOSFET short. Okay. This MOSFET is a channel P. So this is the input circuit for USB C. We have a five amps each. What we are looking for the input circuit, uh, this one, right? What is this? Yeah, this one. The fuse is a 10 amps fuse. Yeah, DC in. Yeah, that's the one. So this is our schematic. One second, what is here? So this is a channel P MOSFET. And this is a channel N. So we were wrong about this, uh, this MOSFET. I can't believe. But wait, from where the gate voltage is coming then? The gate, DC in, DRV. Lol, I can't believe. That's crazy. How we got this wrong? Channel N, fantastic. Can't believe. Well, actually, I was wrong. Good. So the MOSFET is sold on place. Now everything, it's a different story now. Let's plug the charger. Plug in the charger and the board is starting straight away. Now let's check the voltage. 19.9, 19.9, 19.9. And the gate we have, check that, yeah, check that. So we replace the MOSFET, yeah. We replace the MOSFET now with the channel and MOSFET. But because the BQ chip is good, yeah. It wasn't good before, that's the reason why I got this wrong. Because the BQ chip is good, we have 24.8, you see, on the on the gate, yeah. Uh, we schematic is a different story. I mean, I'm not used to work with schematics. That's the reason why I didn't check for schematics when the, it was so easy to find it on Google. Let's see if it's charging the battery. I'm looking to see if it's charging. It's charging fine. No, the board is on. Sorry. Let's power off. It's off and it's not charging. So why is it not charging? So we fixed. We fixed. We, we, we didn't fix anything. I can't believe. I'm on the same point when I start like two hours. I work like two hours on this motherboard. And we're exactly on the same point. You agree with me? We're exactly on the same point. We fit a channel in there, MOSFET. We replace the BQ chip, that's right. We fix the battery, but the motherboard is exactly on the same thing, yeah? It's not charging. Okay, we have the schematic, you know what? We have the schematic. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so this is fixed, the input circuit, yeah? It's all working fine. The charging circuit, Okay, so you know what, I will just edit the video, just uh, jump to the conclusion. So, uh, it's not charging with a normal charger, and it's not charging with the USB-C. So you can see the laptop is on, the board is on, 2.4 amps, but it's not charging. Yeah, so actually the voltage on the, on the battery is not going up, and on the current sensor I have zero volts. So the only problem left... Uh, 
to be fixed on this motherboard is the charging circuit okay so just give me some time and i'll try to figure it out what's wrong with the charging circuit okay you know what all sorted yeah so the problem was when i unlocked the battery i uh, you know push the the metal things on sides and the data one data line was not touching the pin from the motherboard so it's charging with 650 milliamps the battery voltage is 70.3 yeah all good the charging card is low because the battery is nearly fully charged powering up the battery the board and the current is going up to like three point even five amps check that which is about 100 watts yeah so everything is working perfect what do i want to see i will unplug the charger and the board is still running on the battery i will try to discharge the battery to see the max charging current on this motherboard one minute Okay, so I left the board running from like five minutes and the voltage on the battery is 15 volts. Check that, yeah? Now let's plug the charger. So plug in the charger. And we have 4.5 amps, you can see. Let me power off the, the laptop, the board. The board is off and the charging current is 2.6 amps. You can see. Uh, 17, 1. Yeah, it's going up. You can see. I can see here the charging current, 2.4 amps. 2.3 amps. <clears throat> you know what? I think here is still an issue. If you check here, when I, when I hold this down, You think it's a current issue actually? One second. Because the only way to determine if you're losing current on the current tracks or it's a data line issue. The only way to figure it out is with the thermal camera. So now we have like 1.6 amps. Probably because the battery charged quickly, the amount uh, the port uh, lost in like five minutes. yeah so actually you can see yeah that's the charging circuit it's working fine uh, you can see it's losing current on the ground wire you can see here the ground wire is getting hot check that so we are losing current on the ground wire good let me solve that problem how do we fix a problem in a case we are losing current on the on the battery wires uh, kind of simple so you can see the pins are inside but obviously are pushed yeah so I have somehow to drag that pin out like that yeah so now I'm sure the pin it will touch properly and we have the second ground here yeah perfect okay so both ground pins are uh, on the right position now let's check one more time The board it will not charge till the moment uh, the EC chip it will load the firmware. Uh, 4.5 amps. Let me power off the board. The board is off. Let's check the voltage. See, 
16.5. Yeah, the board, it will not charge if you reset the BIOS. And it looks like this BIOS is getting reset when you disconnect the battery for some reason. Can be a dead BIOS battery. Let's see. So the BIOS battery has 1.4 volts. Check that. You can see 1.4. So yeah, the battery is very poor. Let's take out the BIOS battery. Let's come with the power supply. Don't do it, yeah? Don't do it. Why I'm doing it? I like the challenges, yeah? So charging a BIOS battery, uh, it is a challenge. Now, you won't see a current. No, no, you'll not see the current. No. The first place, the battery is gone. The second, uh, the voltage is not that high. Let's see now. We are at 1.9 volts, still better. Let's see now, let's plug the BIOS battery. Plug in this battery. Good, so the board is running. Let me shut down the board. And I will plug the charger to see the charging current. 2.7 amps, you can see, 2.6 amps, which is fine. And the current is going down because the battery is getting charged quickly. And it is nearly fully charged. Yes, yeah, 17.2. Okay, we have the charging LED here. Let's see if it's charging from the customer charger. With the customer charger, plug in the charger, we do have the charging light. And check that the voltage is going up. Yeah, so it's charging fine. On the current sensor, we have 0 0.20, 20 milliamps, which means it's charging. All good. So let me put back the board and let's test it one more time. I'm, uh, I'm happy I fixed it. It was a very hard job. This was over two hour job. Probably the video will be a lot shorter. Now, one recommendation for uh, the owners of this laptop. You see those coils, you can't even touch them. This, those are from the GPU, are so hot. I mean, the CPU are okay, but the GPU are getting mad hot. I mean, if you can use a thermal pad to the back cover of the laptop, this will be a big improvement. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure the next fold, it will be, it will spin around the, those drivers. Anyway, let's recap now at the, at the end of this uh, video. So we checked on the beginning, we checked the input circuit, okay? Uh, we found a laptop a not working laptop where uh, someone working. We found the second MOSFET not being working. We assume the second MOSFET is a channel P MOSFET exactly like the first MOSFET based on the gate uh, voltage. Then we found a dead battery. We repaired the battery. Then we found a shorted MOSFET here. Remember, we replaced the shorted MOSFET then in the moment I plugged the battery, it was a pop and the BQ chip blow up. Now, replacing the BQ chip, I realized the charging current is still high. On that moment, I focus on the second MOSFET, which I replaced it. On that point, we searched for a schematic. We found the schematic and we found the second MOSFET to be a channel N MOSFET. We replaced the channel, the, we replaced the second MOSFET and we had on the gate 25 volts, you remember? So the original fault, I mean, what was faulty here? It was the BQ chip, which was dead from the beginning. And it was the charging MOSFET, which is this one, which was shorted. That's the, the fault. 
the problem is, and I will try to stay humble as possible, no matter what job you will take, if you take a job and someone previous work on the laptop, you will always lose. That, that's a fact, yeah? So, you, I mean, okay, I open this laptop, someone will work here. Okay, I'm replacing that component, it's working fine. Everyone is happy. I'm opening the laptop, I'm replacing the component, and it's not working. On that moment, doubt are, uh, you know, eating you. And you'll think, okay, maybe the people uh, repair before, attempt to repair, maybe they play with the power supply on the board. Maybe they replace a component and they clean the board and I can't see that component. Maybe by mistake, just opening a screw, the screwdriver just slip and, uh, you know, one component is knocked from the board. Just because of this, I'm trying, you know, to avoid laptops where someone worked before. Now, what about in this case where actually this price, this repair price goes way over what the customer, uh, what we spoke with, I spoke with the customer because the customer even said, you know, someone worked before on the laptop. Can I go and ask for more money? No, I can't. Because if I go and ask for more money, the customer would say, sorry, you told me the replace, repair price from before. That's mean you have a flat rate. If you have a flat rate, means you will fix anything on that price. And that's right. So, uh, I'm not sure the right way to approach this kind of repairs. But on this repair, I move forward because this is quite a new laptop. The job is quite expensive, the price I quote from the beginning. But usually, if the customer doesn't tell me actually someone worked before, if I'm opening the laptop and I'm seeing like someone worked there, I'm just, you know, putting all back together and, you know, because, you know, it just, it just experience, you know, I learned from my experience is always I will lose, always, no matter what. No matter what I will lose, I will lose time mostly, and uh, no matter what, chance to repair that laptop actually is very, very low. Okay, good. So I'm happy I fixed this laptop. Um, I will say uh, thank you for watching. You know, don't forget like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, see you on the next one. Bye.